looking at the future, so where what what do you see as the future for research into the glycan uh, glycosylation? What what are the main challenges that you're looking at so, now? So glycosylation is several orders of magnitude more complex than genetics. And we have uh, hundreds, maybe, or tens of thousands of genetic labs, and we have maybe dozens of glycan labs. So I think the largest challenge for glycomics is to build sufficient number of labs, which would generate sufficient number of information, uh, sufficient amount of information which will help us understand what are we actually looking at. So we are just scratching the surface of the of glycosylation. So we, my lab, so my lab is relatively large. I have 50 people in the lab. And we mostly focus on cardiometabolic diseases because they are most prevalent and they have the largest impact on, on human health. But we have to look also in other diseases. So glycosylation has to spread in, in all other studies. People have to look at glycans and use them to help them understand biological systems they're studying. And this is happening and this will happen more and more in the next decade and more people will look at glycans and then we will learn more. Another very important Direction is translating something what is for research use only at the moment into formal diagnostics. So the formal diagnostics require much more detailed procedures, uh, more evidence, and this is where glycomics is going to. So we want to have properly validated, accredited diagnostic biomarkers. And... Um, these things kind of go in parallel. So there are more people interested in, then there is more funding, and then you get more data and things move forward. But um, research is slow. You know, acquiring new knowledge and confirming that knowledge and understanding, it really takes time. And uh, no breakthroughs don't really happen so often. So we will make many small steps understand better what is going on, help people to live healthier lives and then learn more. And then I think entire medicine goes in that direction because you know we tend to think that we have modern medicine, but you know people in the mid 19th century, they believe they have a modern medicine. And I think in 50 years, we will be laughed at all the, the the cytostatics we are using, the, the corticosteroid is universal drug. Uh, you know, this will be ridiculized in the 50 years because we will eventually have to move to personalized medicine. So first analyzing myself and then giving the drug which works too for me. Because now we know that uh, up to 80% of all drugs are wasted. They're giving to people who do not respond. And I believe it's very similar in lifestyle intervention. I believe that up to 80% of all the efforts people are investing in different diets, in different uh, healthy food, in different uh, exercise regimes is wasted because they do it based on a recommendation for a standard person. And they're not a standard person, so they should be doing something else. So this is where we go. Eventually, wherever we go to a gym, to a nutritionist, there will be a set of tests. People will do the test based on the result of a test with the help of a computer. This specialist will be able to give a proper advice to a client. But we are not there yet. So th there's high throughput um, gene, gene devices. You just put it in. So is there anything like that for glycation, uh, glycosylation? So we are developing high throughput glycomics. So um, not nearly as uh, high throughput as uh, genomics, but the genomic really made this big progress with this next generation sequencers in the maybe last decades to 15 years after the huge investment in, in, in tens of billions were made. So we are also making progress in high throughput glycomics. So as I mentioned, the Human Glycome Project aims for a million people as the next 
uh, goal. We are around 200,000 at the moment. So this is not undoable. And uh, technology is making a fantastic progress. There are new machines uh, and we will be able to analyze less and less sample. For example, until a couple of years ago, if we wanted to analyze mouse samples, we had to sacrifice the mouse, collect all the blood there was. Now we can do it from a drop of blood from a tail. So we can do multiple measurement on the same mouse. So thanks think technology is getting more sensitive, uh, more high throughput, and yes, everything is moving forward. Yes. So Professor Lauks, Thank you so much for joining us today. So can you tell people where they can find out more about your work and your lab? So for the Glycan Age is glycanage.com where uh, everything about the Glycan Age test is available and it, there is a web shop. For me, I'm mostly active on social networks, Twitter, LinkedIn, and I mostly post about uh, what I do. I post a lot. And I think this is the best place to look for a short kind of information about our research. And of course, there are publications. We have hundreds of papers published, approximately 30 per year, where we show all the, the, the latest results. Right. W would you say that yours is the largest lab working on glycosylation? We, so there was a recent review in chemical reviews, which listed 190,000 glycoms published. We did 160,000 of this 190,000. So we are approximately 80% of the global high throughput glycomics com comes out from my lab. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for doing all that work. That's, that's really good. Okay. So uh, Dr. Lautz, so much, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure talking to you. Okay.